Hey guys, quick heads up before I start the video, the link down below takes you to my Patreon where you can download the project files for this video. Also gain access to my premium tutorials and in-depth courses where we build games together from start to finish. Check out my Patreon below, gain direct access to years of experience so that you can start working on your dream game tomorrow. Hello guys and welcome back to a new episode of my multiplayer bean battle royale tutorial series. So in this episode we're going to be simplifying a couple of things that we set up in the last video, actually in the last two videos regarding picking up the weapons uh, and regarding handling the inputs on the weapons. Um, and yeah, also we're going to fix some bugs. So right now, for example, if I pick up an assault rifle, I can simply start shooting. I can then also pick up a pistol. So now I got 30 bullets, so I can just shoot till my clip is empty. And then there's two things, so I can either reload, which works fine, or if I shoot my clip fully empty, so right now it's fully empty, then I can also just swap to my pistol, swap back, and that instantly reloads it. So uh, what we can do is we can shoot, swap, swap, shoot, swap, swap. So that's a little bug that we want to fix. Actually, uh, in the logic right now, if we pick up an assault rifle, it does drop a new one, but it does not actually set up the one that we had here. So it doesn't actually swap it properly, and that's because we had this little function. If we go over to our character, and then inside our handle pickup event, then we had this logic over here that basically prevents us from, pick, from picking up a weapon that we already have. And we don't want that. So even if we pick up a weapon that we already have, we do actually want to update it. So the first thing that we're going to do is actually inside of this function, we're simply going to delete this and hook it back up. Then we hit compile and save, and there we go. Then the next thing that we want to do is that we basically want to prevent that the player can just switch between weapons and then instantly have new bullets. So what we're going to set up in order to fix this is a little spam prevention logic. So we're simply going to put this uh, active slot here to the right, then off of the true, we're gonna get a do once. So here we go. We hook that up here and then this one goes behind here then here we will get a simple delay of let's say one second so this needs to be equivalent to what your maximum reload time kind of is and of course guys keep in mind we're working with a bean battle royale here typically you would have all kinds of animations so you would just have have actual weapon swapping animations and because you would typically just have weapon swapping animations then you would never actually be working on stuff like this so in pubg for example when you put one gun when you when you hold one gun and then put it on your back that automatically takes about one second and then that already automatically fixes the whole spam prevention stuff so this is of course very custom to this project but uh, this is a, a simple way to fix that the player can just spam and, and cheat that inside of this bean battle royale. So then we hook this cable up like this. So basically, what does this do? Well, whenever the player presses slot one, so that is index zero, we check if we are not already in index zero. If we are not, then we're gonna switch to index zero once. We're gonna wait a second until we reset the gate so that if within that second, the player also is already spamming two again, it will simply ignore it until the one second is done and then you can switch again. So that will basically prevent our whole bug because this is longer than our reload period. Then next up, I want to go towards our uh, core weapon here. So if we go to actors, weapons, and then core weapon. Then right now we see that we have uh, set everything up using dispatchers. And I actually want to replace that logic and make it a bit simpler and just run everything simply off of uh, actual interface events. Um, this confused a couple of people. So some people might not find it as handy or as neat of a setup. So what we're going to do is we're simply going to remove all of this. Also remove these guys and then also remove the handle reload here. Then we're gonna hit compile save, and then we're going over to our uh, interface folder here. We're going to right click, go to blueprints, blueprint interface, type in BPI underscore inputs, open this guy up. Now our first input is going to be input underscore reload. Our next input will be input underscore primary uh, action rest. We're gonna copy paste the name and then our next input will be primary action released. There we go. Then hit compile save, and that's that. Then here on the uh, core weapon, we're gonna click class settings, go to interfaces and then type in BPI. And then we want to select our BPI inputs here. That gives us the interface events. So we're simply gonna double click the pressed, the released and the reload. We're going to hook them back up again. So our reload is supposed to go in this one. 
And these guys, they go all the way up. So they go over here. So our pressed event goes into here to make it pressed and our released goes into here to make it released. Then we hit compile and save and there we go. Uh, then inside of the character, we have our dispatchers over here. So whenever we do the primary action, which is left mouse button, we have to press and release. And then on R, we have to reload, which calls the reload. So we're going to remove the dispatchers here and then also remove them over here. Hit compile, save. And what we're going to do is we're going to drag in our active weapon, drag out of it and type in get child actor to get this one. And then we're simply going to be sending our interface events here. So this one is going to be primary action and then pressed. So it's this guy. The released is going to be primary action released. So that's this guy. And the reload is going to be reload input reload message. There we go. Now we want to move these guys a little bit more to the right here. And then we're going to drag out of here, type in is valid. So whenever we have a valid child actor, then we want to attempt to send the interface over. So we're going to do an is valid here. We're going to do an is valid here and copy paste it once more. I'm doing is valid over here. Then make sure you hook up your child actor everywhere. There we go. And then also plug this cable into here since that's the target for your interface. Here we go. So now this is a bit simpler. We don't have any more bindings depending on whether we have correct casts. There's no more waiting events. So when working with bindings to event dispatchers, we need to ensure that we do everything in a chronological order. So basically, what do I mean by that? If we look here inside of the character, then we see that we go into uh, update weapons here, where we then set our child actor. So we actually set this class to certain class. Then we call this setup event over here, and then we have to do everything in this specific order. So we cast to the weapon to make us the owner of the weapon. We then cast to the weapon to set our reference, and then we call this function here, which then basically set up all those bindings. So we're working in a way that everything has to be chronological and has to go in a certain flow. Now we basically cut out that flow and it is no longer order dependent. So that makes it a bit simpler. So then back inside of the character, if we just uh, find our little update weapon function over here, then over here where we see setup weapon, we're going to open that guy up and then we're going to remove our setup actor event here. So if we hit compile save then inside of our core character also we're simply going to remove this setup actor over here hit compile and save there we go now we do still want to be the owner of the actual weapon and we also still want to set the reference of ourselves as the core character so that's going to remain unchanged and then we're going to close this out close this out and there we go, we hit compile and save. Then inside of our core weapon, we see that we had this setup function here. So what did it handle? Well, it was called on that uh, on that setup actor event that we just removed. And if we open it up, it simply uh, pulls an ID, then gets an, uh, a static mesh and sets the static mesh over here. So since this is the only parameter, this uh, static mesh here that we actually get from this data table, then we might as well simply uh, remove this logic and simply set up the static mesh as a variable like this as well. So we can easily set it inside of the child actor so that everything goes in the same way. So what I mean by that, if we take a look here inside of our weapons folder, we got a core weapon and a sub weapons right so assault rifle pistol if we open up the assault rifle then we already know that everything is handled here and nothing runs off of a data table right now i explained in the previous video why that is so it makes it a bit more dynamic let's say that we actually by code want to change the max amount of ammo in certain game modes or we want to change the rate of fire whenever you picked up an energy drink then it can be easier if we actually have all of these parameters over here instead of in a data table so uh, what we're going to do is we're simply going to remove this because this is only used actually now for the pickup items. That's what we're going to make it. We're going to get this static mesh, copy paste it into the graph here, remove the setup function as a whole, remove it over here, hit compile, save. Then we're going to get this guy, copy paste, and we're going to move it over to our construction script. And then out of here, we're going to click promote variable, and we're going to call this weapon underscore mesh, something like that gonna hit compile save there we go so right now our weapon event graphs look like this so we just have our clean interface inputs over here and then also this one over here so it's very nice and clean it does not have any setup logic over here 
And then inside of our character, everything looks like this right now. So now one thing that you do need to do, since we uh, basically replaced uh, that we now set the weapon mesh over here, right? Is that we're going to go inside of our assault rifle. We're going to click on class defaults and then over here, set up the correct mesh. So this is the assault rifle mesh. And if we go over to the viewport, it compiles save. Then we see that we see the actual mesh appearing over here. So that's good. And now for the pistol, if we now go to the viewport, we see that it's empty as well. We then click on class defaults, then this weapon mesh should be set to pistol, which we can find over here. Hit compile, save, there we go. Then if we go into the event graph, we see this event begin play logic. We can actually remove that. And here inside of the assault rifle, we can remove that too, since everything basically is handled inside of the core weapon anyways. Now, if we close everything, then we can give it all a little test. So I'm gonna spawn ourselves a couple more boxes quickly so that we can have a bit more loot go cool. and then we're gonna do two players uh listen server and hit play then we're gonna open up all of the loot boxes let's see if we got a nice amount of guns here so there we go so now the server can pick up this uh, assault rifle it can instantly start shooting client sees that i have it i can then pick up another assault rifle i can then swap out my assault rifle for a pistol so then if I uh, take my assault rifle in hand and shoot, swap to my pistol, and then I spam that I want to swap back to my gun again, it prevents me from doing that. So it's a one second prevention time, so you got to be quick if you want to catch it. But here we go, we shoot, swap, and then I, I keep spamming too, but it takes a second before it actually switches. So that fixes our infinite reloading bug. Then the next bug that we had to fix is that uh, with a weapon, I should actually be able to pick up a new weapon. So if we're gonna close, if we're gonna empty out this whole clip, so we're just gonna shoot, 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 shoot. And then the clip is fully empty. If we then pick up a new weapon, I got a fresh clip again because I picked up a new weapon. Then for the client, we're gonna test the same. So the client picks up the assault rifle, shoot. The client can reload. The client can pick up a pistol. The client can swap and then not instantly swap back. And then the client can empty out this clip and then swap over to a new weapon and start shooting with that one again. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. We simplified a couple of things. We made everything a bit more organized and neat for our little Bean Battle Royale multiplayer game here. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, hit the like and subscribe. That helps out the channel. If you want to check out the project, you can download it on my Patreon, where you can mess around it yourself and perhaps make some changes or additions to the project. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.